What's going on guys? I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. Today I'm back with another 100 movies I missed update now. If you're new to the channel, I started this at the beginning of the year as my New Year's resolution to watch 100 movies that I had not seen for the first time, whether that is a best picture winner, a classic, just a movie that everyone talks about and I feel like I should see. Now I am 75 movies in, so there's only 25 movies to go. I've been updating every 10 ever since the first update where I did 25. So after this I'll have one more video where I'm at 85 and then I'll do a final video when I go from 85 to 100. I know that a lot of people started doing this as well. Jack from Fanatic Films is killing it. He's at like 100 plus. I think Jared and Certain Vids and Trevor are all doing it as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out their channels if you haven't and see their progress on the 100 Movies I Missed update. And I also keep track of all these on Letterboxd. You can follow me there at Filmstock. My name, Chris, will pop up. So the first movie that I watched in this update is The Blues Brothers, which came out in 1980, starring Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. And this movie is a classic that I am happy to say I've finally seen and enjoyed quite a bit. I gave it four out of five stars on Letterboxd. I knew the song Soul Man from like Drake and Josh back in the day, and I always listened to that by Sam and Dave. I like Sam and Dave's music quite a bit. So going into this, I knew that I probably would enjoy it. I like John Belushi in Animal House and on SNL. It delivered exactly the way I wanted it to. It had some really catchy musical sequences. It had great comedy and just the absurd aspects of the ending are so awesome. Uh, the Blues Brothers is one that's also quotable. Uh, we're on a mission from God. I just love that little quote. I think it's even on the poster. So the next movie that I watched is Smokey and the Bandit, which came out in 1977, and it stars Burt Reynolds, and this is a movie that my dad and grandpa absolutely love. So I had seen chunks of it on TV, but this was my first time watching it from start to finish, and I really had a fun time with it. It's kind of just a dumb comedy, but the premise alone is funny. Burt Reynolds has to drive from Georgia to Texas and bring back a ton of Coors beer. He's kind of escorting an 18-wheeler along the way, and then he picks up a bride played by Sally Field, who's running away from a wedding, and then she, he's getting chased by Sheriff Buford T. Justice, and it just makes for some great comedy. It's a very absurd movie, but it's also one that I feel like I could watch, you know, every now and then, just throw it on if it's on TV. The next movie that I watched is My Cousin Vinny, which came out in 1992, stars Marissa Tomei and Joe Pesci, as well as the karate kid himself, uh, Ralph Macchio. I didn't really know much about this movie going into it, so I didn't have any expectations, and I was really surprised by it. It was a very intriguing story, kind of a courtroom drama in a way almost, and uh, it just felt like these characters were hopeless as they were stuck in Alabama. They're like from New York. It's just like a fish out of water comedy done right in my opinion. Really just a feel good movie. I like the way that it all wrapped up. So the next three movies that I'm going to talk about, I'm not really going to go in depth on because the, I've done a video alone for each of them where I did first time watches and also talked about them in my Spooktober videos because they're all three classic horror movies. The first one I watched is A Nightmare on Elm Street which came out in 1984 and I didn't really love this one. I gave it three out of five on Letterboxd. You can check out my video where I go super in depth on it, but I was underwhelmed to say the least. It's still like a solid slasher, but maybe the hype was too much for me and I might enjoy it more on rewatch. The next movie that I watched is Friday the 13th, which came out in 1980, and this is a really disappointing movie for me. You can check out my video where I give my quick thoughts after my first time watch, but it is just a snooze fest. This movie is so boring. I was very disappointed by the role of Jason Voorhees, and it's not a movie that I ever want to watch again. I know that's a very hot take, but it's just the way I feel. And the next movie that I watched out of this horror trilogy, if you will, is John Carpenter's the Thing, which came out in 1982. Absolutely love this movie. I think that it's perfect when it comes to creating an isolationist feel and really playing off of the Arctic area, the atmosphere. Kurt Russell's really kills it in this, and the practical effects are stunning. I gave this movie 4.5 out of 5 on Letterboxd. I could go to 5 out of 5 on Rewatch. I plan to rewatch it eventually. I want to let it sit a little longer, maybe rewatch it next spooky season. But overall, I can't really complain much about it. It takes a little long to get going in the beginning, but I also have a video on the channel where I watch this for the first time, so feel free to check it out there. The next movie that I watched is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, directed by David Fincher, and this movie came out in 2011, starring Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara, who was actually nominated for an Oscar, rightfully so. Uh, her transformative role is very creepy and eerie, and she plays a very disturbed person, and she does it to perfection, in my opinion. Also, seeing James Bond in anything that's not James Bond, I really do enjoy. I will say this movie's two hours and 38 minutes, and it's a little too long for me. Um, I hate to just say it like that, but that's the way it is. Like, the first hour, I was really struggling to get on board because it was following two different characters, but once they meet up and they really get into the investigation, this movie really does pick up for me. I think on rewatch, I will enjoy it quite more because I'll know exactly where it's headed and I'll be able to pick up on hints and details that I missed the first time around, but it was a little long-winded in the first half for me, but it really did pick up and ended with a bang. It's not my favorite Fincher movie by any means, but it's still really solid. The next movie that I watched is American History X, which came out in 1998, starring Edward Norton and Edward Furlong. Edward Norton was nominated for Best Actor in a 
leading role. This is his best performance that I've seen by far. I know he's great in Fight Club. I know he's really good in Birdman too. I like him a lot there. But here in American History X, you see the transformation of his character, Derek, from start to finish, and it's told through flashbacks in black and white, and then present day is in a uh, regular color. This movie is a total gut punch. It just tackles irrelevant themes regarding racism and just social constructs and ideas in today's world. I didn't know why this movie was called American History X, and when I found out why early on, I was like, oh, that's really clever. I had no idea why it was ever called that, so I really like the title of this movie and the way that plays in, and just the method of storytelling was so intriguing to me. And I was locked into this movie basically from start to finish, so the next movie I watched is Her, starring Joaquin Phoenix, directed and written by Spike Jones. and this movie came out in 2013, and this is where I'm probably gonna get some dislikes. I didn't like this movie. It was not for me at all. Um, at first, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I really did find the movie aesthetically pleasing. It was gorgeous, the way that the reds that Joaquin Phoenix's character would wear really popped on screen. The color grading and all that was well done. I think that it's even just a gorgeous movie. The cinematography is stunning, and Joaquin Phoenix gives a fantastic performance, as always. He really doesn't do any wrong. He's one of the best actors working, no doubt about it but the movie as a whole was just like what is going on here like it, it I get what it was going for it just wasn't for me like it really did drag significantly I was dozing off quite a few times I couldn't really buy into it and like there was a lot of uncomfortable moments in this movie where I was like literally I would mute the tv I was like oh, this is like too weird for me I can't take it and the last movie that I watched on this 100 movies I missed update is Slumdog Millionaire this movie actually won best picture and it came out in 2008 and I'm here to tell you I think it, it deserved best picture I really do I know the Dark Knight came out that year, but it wasn't nominated. But of the nominees, I would have chosen Slumdog Millionaire. I do think The Dark Knight's probably the best movie of 2008, but I digress, it didn't get the nomination. Slumdog Millionaire is directed by Danny Boyle, and he just does such a good job of bringing his creative flair. I love the way that he directs movies like 127 Hours and Steve Jobs, and that's so prominent here, whether it's that specific style of editing that he likes to include in his movies, or just the, the unique way he tells his stories. I just love how it goes from Jamal, who is on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the Indian version of it, and then each question it kind of cuts back to something from his past that lets us understand and gives us more as to why he knows the answer to it. I just think that's such a brilliant method of providing a story, telling a story. I will admit it took me about 30 or 40 minutes to really get locked in and invested into the story, but once I realized exactly what was going on, the direction that it was going, I was sold. And the last like hour of this movie to 30 minutes was so intense. It was damn good filmmaking. Like I was locked in. It was super intense. One more best picture winner off the list. I'm getting close to having seen every single one from this century, which is pretty cool. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this 100 Movies I Missed update. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around. Definitely hit the like button. Comment your thoughts on the movies that I watched down below for the first time. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean the world. The support lately has just meant so much. I cannot emphasize that enough. If you've ever clicked on a video, liked a video, commented, any of that, it just means so much. Stay tuned for future live streams, content, collabs, 100 Movies I Missed updates, because I'm getting close to the end of that thing. 25 movies I'm going to push through. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.